Hi and welcome to this RIPEX tutorial where we're looking at a Foldoplex point-to-point -point link. Before guiding you through the configuration, we will briefly introduce this connection and list of scenarios where it is typically used. The RIPEX Foldoplex link behaves like a transparent L2 bridge. A Foldoplex link allows traffic to be transferred in both directions simultaneously and minimizes delays in communication. It can also be established within a non light of sight environment. Many types of communication benefit from Foldoplex point-to-point -point configuration. This can be across any IP or RS-232 transparent link and offers high-speed communication and low latency. Typical uses in power distribution are for goose messaging, cell mirrored bits and point-to-point -point backbones in advanced metering infrastructure. Foldoplex links are also useful for endless connections between digital mobile radio base stations for voice over IP communication. A Foldoplex link is completely transparent and uses a frequency pair. It can offer a combined total of 3.4 megabits to be carried over the link. Raycom offers a 19 inch rack mount which can include all the required accessories such as power source and duplexer in a convenient and easy to install package. And of course, a full duplex solution offers all standard RIPEX2 features. When installing in the field, it is important to keep at least 80 decibel of isolation between the two frequencies. To achieve this, we recommend the use of a duplexer, passband filters, that allow a transmitter and receiver to use a single antenna. A duplexer isolates the transmitter from the receiver and enables the RIPEX2 to receive and transmit simultaneously without interference. As we stated, isolation requirements for simultaneous operations are 80 decibel. Without duplexer, separate antennas for transmitting and receiving will be required. These antennas will have to be spaced more than 30 meters apart in order to provide the required 80 decibel isolation. The duplexer can be mounted externally or inside the rack chassis. Now let's get started. All you need is two RIPEX units, a device to configure the setup and a few minutes of your time. For full duplex point-to-point -point operation, both units must be in bridge mode. This requires both Ethernet IP addresses to be within one subnet. Be careful when configuring the frequency pair. One frequency will be used for data transmission from the first unit and the other for data transmission from the second unit. If you are conducting bench tests, it is sufficient to attach dummy antennas to both RX and TXRX antenna ports. As we mentioned earlier, in the field, the use of passband filters, also known as duplexers, is the only practical solution. Please connect to your first unit via its current IP address. It is supposed the unit is in the factory settings, so the default IP address on all Ethernet ports is 192, 168, 169, and 169. Or you can use the USB to Ethernet or USB to Wi-Fi adapter using the IP address 10, 9, 8, and 7 with DHCP enabled. The default access credentials are admin as user and admin as the password as well. Click on the login button to start the configuration. After logging in to the device, go to settings, device and select the unit menu. Set the unit name to RIPEX A and leave the mode on the bridge setting. Now click on Settings, Interfaces and select the Ethernet menu. For clarity, the default name of the network interface is Auxiliary, similar to the unit name. If you like, you can change it. Set the IP address and mask to 
168, 1 and 1 slash 24. All Ethernet ports are by default in the same bridge interface. Now go back to Settings, Interfaces and select the Radio menu. In this menu you must configure both the radio protocol and radio parameters fields. Set the communication mode to full duplex. The remaining parameters should be left in default settings. Now we will set the radio parameters. Frequencies, RF power, channel spacing and occupied bandwidth limit must all be set as stated in the license you obtained from your regulatory office. Sometimes modulation is also a part of the license. Since we're using duplex, RX and TX frequencies must be different. Antenna configuration is automatically set to dual because communication mode was set to full duplex. In this example, we set modulation type to QAM and modulation through the maximum 256 QAM. RF power to the minimum of 20 decibel milliwatts as recommended for lab tests channel spacing to the most typical 25 kilohertz, occupied bandwidth limit of 25 kilohertz. We leave forward error correction off. When you set forward error correction to on, it will decrease the possible data throughput, although the coverage and reliability will be higher. As a reminder, wider channel spacing and higher modulation produce a higher data speed. If you want to achieve the maximum speed, set modulation type to QAM, modulation to 256 QAM, channel spacing to 300 kHz and forward error correction to OFF. The configuration is almost complete. The last step is to apply the changes. Although the RIPAX2 settings on the first unit have been changed, these changes have not yet been saved. In the top right corner, click on the Changes button. A new menu appears. It summarizes the changes against the current settings. Check the changes you have made and then click on the Send Changes button. When the confirmation message is displayed, you have successfully set up the first unit. Finally, log out of the unit in the upper right corner. To complete the configuration of the full duplex link, you must reconnect physically to the second unit and repeat the same steps you followed with the first unit. Connect your device used for setup to the second unit as you did for the first unit and access the unit using admin and admin. Change the name of the unit to RIPXB and leave the mode setting in bridge. The Ethernet IP address and mask are 192, 168, 1 and 2 slash 24 for the second unit. The radio parameters are exactly the same as those on the first unit, except for the frequencies which must be switched for the second unit. Remember to apply the changes by pressing the Send Changes button in the Changes menu. You can verify the accessibility of devices using ICMP ping from the diagnostic tools. As you will see, the round trip is very fast, less than 20 milliseconds. The variance in response time is almost zero, which is also an important parameter. For more complex tests, run some iperf throughput tests and or simulate your application. Thank you for watching this RIPEX tutorial. If you need any more information or support, please get in touch with us or send a support request from the support section on our website. And remember, please subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorial releases. Thank you and have a great day.